really hate that there is so much pressure on women as they approach age 30 to like have it all together and I don't feel like you have to do that. As a woman who is over 30, like I feel like life got so much better after 30 and I wanna talk about that on this video but I also wanna highlight three things that I want you to consider if you are approaching age 30 that will help you set up this new decade as your best decade. But life only gets better, I'm telling you. So I'm gonna get into it but before I do, hey girl hey or hey boy hey because I know that there are many guys that watch my channel. My name is Jocelyn and I teach black women like you how to use your nine to five incomes to save more and spend wisely so that you can do more of what you love without going deeper into debt for it. And so I am just basically your financial big sister. Like I'm here to help the girls realize that like life only gets better as your money gets better, as your money mindset gets better. It opens the door to so many other things and I'm gonna talk about them on this video. And again, it's gonna be about three things that you know all women as they approach age 30 should consider but especially black women because this is a black woman's channel okay so number one is to get crystal clear on the life that you want for yourself um and if you are anything like me even my friends like we are easily influenced and easily like controlled by our family our friends uh society social media our careers our bosses like Everyone was always telling us what to do for the first half of our lives. And if I'm honest, that's never gonna stop. Like it's always gonna be there, but I would hope that you take the time and take consistent time as you approach age 30 to pray, to journal, to spend time alone and explore like what, who you are and like what matters most to you. You know, explore different ha hobby, explore different hobbies, like explore just, different countries like different states and don't feel inclined to just continue the life that like you were brought up in because you may realize that like the things that matter to you may not matter to your family and your friends and that as a result things may change from a relationship perspective with them and that's okay you know it's not that you're isolating yourself and that you're saying no to all of the things that happened in your past but you are taking the time to get clear on who you are and then eventually you start to build a life around that identity that you're looking to step into. So one of the things that I love to do, you know, are self visualization exercises. And basically what this is, is it allows you to take time and meditate and like just get lost in like your mind. And then when you wake up, often there are visions that were you know imparted on you and then just start to write those things down because you never know like what can actually manifest you know and what is actually in your future and it starts to get you excited about what the future holds for yourself now is everything going to actually manifest is that everything that god has for you maybe and maybe not like i'm not god but some of the things that God has imparted on me as I do these visualization exercises is so crystal clear that even if I don't get it, but I get close to it, like that's enough for me. And it just excites me to like wake up every day because work is gonna be there, okay? Whether you're in your 20s or your 30s, like it's easy to just get frustrated with your job, with your boss, like with all these things that are going on around you, but like being able to take time to just breathe to just pray and just to write down like the highest version of yourself, the highest version of your life is really gonna change the game mentally for you. And you're gonna start to operate from a place of gratitude, a place of excitement and a place of expectation, you know, not attaching it to a timeline per se, um, but just knowing that like, if I can think this thing that clearly in my mind, imagine what can happen in my actual life, you know? And so in addition to those self visualization exercises, I also, still write letters to myself. I actually started doing those around like 29, age 29, like I started writing letters to myself. And then over time I started writing letters to God. And then um, I also write letters to my future husband. Am I engaged? No girl, do I have a boyfriend? Absolutely not. But that's okay because one day I am and I'm gonna be like, wow, like the vision that I had for you, God exceeded. You know, like you are so much more amazing, so much more powerful, so much more just the bomb because that's how I feel my, about my future husband, about my future partner. Like I call him my fine ass bestie. Oh, I shouldn't say that online because I don't need, hopefully he ain't watching this. But anyway, like I just big him up. Like I'm his biggest fan, his biggest cheerleader. And like, I just want that 
feeling, you know, to match my reality, even if it's not line by line of what I write. Like ultimately I wanna be able to hand those, dang, I shouldn't say that either. See, look at me giving out my tea. But basically like love letters to the people, you know, that are most important to you. It can be your parents, your siblings. Like, like if you lost a parent, like I love that idea because it helps you to heal. Like I used to write a lot of letters to my um, mom and my dad actually. Um, and that was really important as I was going through like my healing of my father wound, like a healing of a mother wound that I didn't even know I had. Like it just was really, really helpful. Um, and so I urge you to do that as well. Point two is to get serious about your money. Like get serious about it. And, and if you've watched any of my former videos, I talk a lot about how my 20s was really like my yellow phase. And to be clear, I'm still in it to an extent. But <laughs> you know, like, I got crystal clear at like 28, you know? I feel like God put it on my heart because that's when I really started like getting serious about home ownership. And when it didn't happen, when I wanted it to, like because of my student loans and how much money I owed and how I wasn't managing my money that well, I was like, well, dang, like, am I ever gonna be able to afford a house? Like I went through the process so many times and it just didn't work out. And so God had put it on my heart, like at 28 to be like, listen, you need to get serious about paying off this debt. Otherwise, you're gonna continue on this cycle and you're gonna have to be relying on this job. You know, you're gonna have the trips and all this stuff, but like, what does all that matter if you don't have anything that's working on your behalf that you can't leave behind? And so like, I ended up moving back home a couple of months after that and got serious about paying off my debt. Um, and contrary, contrary to what you may believe and what you may see online, a lot of the big moves that you see that you make you know, buying a home, getting married, having kids, all of that kind of stuff, like it usually happens in your 30s. Like that's usually the average age for those big milestones. So if you are at 33, 34, 37, and you don't feel like you've reached those things, don't feel like you're behind because it's all about laying a foundation to get these things. They're not gonna happen overnight. For me, like I said, it started at 28 for me and I'm not 28 anymore, okay? so. It's a journey, it's a process. And I think the more you learn to embrace that and you just make each day better than the last, like you'll be heading in the right direction. So getting serious about your money will help you to pay off that debt. It'll help you to buy that house. That house. Um, and to do all that, you have to get clear and get better at like tracking your spending, identifying like, what are you spending a lot of money on that you don't need to spend? What are some of the subscriptions that you have that you can get rid of? Why are you spending thousands of dollars on beauty maintenance every day when you have a $2,000 car note? You know, like, th make the math make sense. The math ain't math in a lot of our situations. And for me, like, taking those trips all the time in my 20s when I realized I couldn't even afford a house, like, it just, the math wasn't mathing. So for me, like, if you know that, like, okay, girl, you right, I do wanna pay down some of this debt, I do wanna improve my credit score, I do wanna eventually buy a house, like, but I don't know where to start. You definitely need my spending plan and it is free to download. The link is in the description and I created it specifically for my nine to five earning girlies who are busy, you know, but still want to get their money right. Like they are just operating off vibes or they know that they need to do better and they're doing a couple of things, but there's no true strategy. And my nine to five spending plan will help you get crystal clear on where your money is going and where it's coming from so that you are assigning each dollar a responsibility. Now it doesn't have to be everything down to the penny or even the dollar, but like your big buckets of the things that matter the most are gonna be accounted for on that sheet. And you will be crystal clear on where you stand in less than one hour with it because baby, I'm good at what I do, okay? I'm a certified financial educator. And so I know that like, these are the big buckets that we need to be focused on and you can obviously alter them according to, you know, what matters the most to you. But that is available to download in the description and I've gotten so much good feedback from it already. And again, it is free, F-R-E-E. -E. So don't even worry about giving me no coins for it unless you want to. Um, and to be clear, just to kind of wrap this point up, um, as I mentioned, a lot of your big milestones happen in your 30s. And for me, I didn't buy my house until my, and I was in my 30s, you know? Um, I got serious about paying off my debt right before 30, you know? So it's not too late. And I really want to emphasize that because it's easy to look online and realize like, oh, she's 26 and got three properties or, oh, she got married at 24. Like, don't compare yourself to other people because you don't know what they had to go through to get that. And you don't know what they going through. Now, we're going to hope that it's a healthy situation 
a fruitful situation but like comparison truly is the thief of joy and so just focus on your lane that's why i'm all about self visualization i'm all about you know praying i'm all about letters to self letters to god letters to god letters to you know your parents your future spouse whatever because what i want with my partner with my honey is not what everybody else wants. You know, like our dynamic is gonna look completely different. We are our own goals. And he don't even know that yet. Cause he, I don't know where he at. And that's okay. But like, we are our own goals. And I hope that he's already thinking about that as he thinks about me, okay? So that's point two. And then point three is to take care of your health. Whew, take care of your health. So let me give y'all a little more tea about me. So in my twenties, I've lived a lot of places, you know? I've lived a lot of places and I got serious about my health. Well, I should say I got serious about my fitness in my 20s, um, not about the food, you know? So like my metabolism was much faster because I was a cheerleader growing up. Like I was really into sports, dance, all of that kind of stuff. So I was used to my body moving and burning fat a lot. So like, even if we were getting ready to meet, when I say we, I, I'm thinking of me and my girls, like if we were getting ready to get ready, get ready for a trip, you know, we could do a, a month workout challenge and be good to go for the trip. Nowadays, hey, nowadays, it, it doesn't work that way. The food matters so much more. Like, it really needs to be like, 80 20 when it comes to how you eat and your wellness um and one thing that one of the trainers that i um purchased a lot of former videos from is he used to always say like you cannot out train a bad diet and i would hear it and be like yeah you're right but i'm gonna eat this pizza and work out after work <laughs> and it would work but like now that i'm in my 30s like that metabolism baby it it takes me twice as long to burn the amount of calories that i used to burn like and granted, everybody's genetics are different. Everybody's body is different. I'm a thick girl. You know, I'm a thick girly. I've been a thick girly. Even when I was smaller, always had, you know, A and T. You know, always had A and T. And think about what that means. If you, you know, it didn't, it doesn't come to you. I'm sure it'll come to you by the end of the video. But, you know, I always had a little jiggle on me. You feel me? And I couldn't do the things that my friends would do who had a different metabolism, who had different um genetics and so for me like i got super clear and better about my fitness in the panty because i gained a lot of weight in the panty um pandemic and i was the heaviest i had ever been like i don't i didn't even recognize myself until my friend took a picture and i was like oh my god you all just let me die golly like i was hella big okay like and I'm only 5'5", five, five. like I just can't be carrying all that weight. So I just knew like, okay girl, things are slowing down. And things are gonna slow down no matter how, you know, athletic you are. Things just don't move as quickly. And it's a lot harder to lose the weight. It's a lot harder to maintain the weight. So it's time to like really get clear on like your health because that helps you to avoid diseases that become more common like just to give another example, like I didn't have fibroids my whole life and I just found out that I had them like maybe a year ago. And when my OB told me that, I was like, girl, what are you sure? Nobody's ever told me that I can have them. She was like, you can develop them later in life. There's no timeline to when they come to your body. And so basically like that was another push that I needed to say like, okay, girl, I don't wanna have to get surgery. And right now I don't need surgery. I haven't needed surgery as long as I've known them because I've maintained my weight. Um, even though it does fluctuate, like every time I go, that's just my prayer. Like, okay, girl, please don't tell me I need surgery because I don't want to get it. Like, I want to shrink these naturally with a healthy diet, you know, with avoiding alcohol, with all the things we know we're not supposed to be doing, but bring us joy. Like, we're human. I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but like, take your health serious. Even if that's just a walk outside, like moving your body for 10 minutes every day. Like, I commit to... 45 minutes, five days a week. And that's been really, really helpful for me. Um, and as of late, because I'm getting ready for a big event, like I've been trying to do at least eight to 10K steps. So sometimes my workout is just walking 10K, you know, and that's okay. Um, but in addition to like your physical health, please get serious about your mental health. Like I feel like a lot of people go through life, you know, men and women alike, and they never address their traumas you know they never address their mental health and they just spend the rest of their lives 
blaming other people or living life in fear or projecting the things that they've experienced or didn't experience or feel like they can't experience because they've never seen it. Like, even when I think about love and relationships, like, that's really important to me. And though, you know, I didn't see too many healthy examples of marriage, it's still something that I want to be healthy for me and my future partner, my future husband. You know, we will be our own goals. Like, will we have examples of other amazing couples? Will I hope that we're a part of an ecosystem of healthy couples that, like, handle conflict resolution well and are growing together yes but until we can find those people it's gonna be us okay and we are forever gonna be our own goals um so you know just getting clear and getting out of your own way on a lot of stuff can really be addressed in therapy or even just the, the things that you listen to the things that you consume like all of these things start to impact your mental and what you truly believe is what's possible as what's possible versus what's not possible so Take your health serious, please. Like, go to the dentist, get your OB, your pap smears, like, get your primary care, um, what are they called? Physicals, like, all that stuff is being paid for anyway if you are a nine to five earning girly, like. So take advantage of it and get serious about it because the sooner you can catch stuff like I did, like my fibroids, the easier it's gonna be for you to avoid all these additional fees because y'all know healthcare is hella expensive in the United States, so. The sooner you can track stuff and catch stuff, the easier it's gonna be for you to save money, number one, and then two, like address whatever needs to be addressed. So that is it for this video. Um, please comment below and let me know which, which one of these you're gonna be prioritizing as you approach 30. And even if you're over 30, like it's not too late to really take the time to think about these kind of things. Um, and if you like this kind of content, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend, you know. Um, hit that notification bell and I do have tons of other videos like this on my channel. Um, one of the videos that I think you may like as well that I hope you guys check out is three things women should do before they get married or have children because I feel like a lot of people lose their identity in their kids. A lot of people lose their identity in their husbands and their partners. And as much as I am a my man, my man, my man kind of girl, maximize money ain't going nowhere, okay? Like he gonna be behind the camera if anything helping me with this. Um, the trips with the girls ain't going nowhere. You know, the self-love, the, the spa days, they're not going nowhere. He's going to be adding to my happiness, but he's not going to change who I am at my core. If anything, we're going to just be making each other better, but I don't want him to rely on me to make him happy. And I don't want him, I don't want to rely on him to make me happy. We're only going to enhance the happiness and the joy that we've already cultivated for ourselves. So check that video out. It's going to pop up on the screen. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next video and, uh, yeah, peace.